wonder if anyone notices my shirts. Welcome everyone to another video. In today's video, we're going to be looking at seven things about Affinity Designer that you may not know about. Let's go. So the first thing that you may not know about is the stock panel. Now, if we jump into Affinity Designer, if you don't have the stock panel, which I've got right here, I usually have it docked at the bottom here. You can select it from view, studio, and down to stock to open it up. Now in here, you've got a whole host of stock photos and stock pictures that you can use within your designs. For example, if we search something like, I don't know, frog, comes up with a bunch of pictures of frogs. You've got a few different websites that you can use and you've even got an option, especially with Pixabay, to use a vector image as well. Now once this loads up, you can see a bunch of these designs which you can simply click and drag, pop them onto your artboard and use them basically. So if you didn't know about that, it's super useful. All right, so the second thing about Affinity Designer that you may not know about is the stroke pressure. Now, if we head back in and if we make using the pen tool a simple curve of some kind, something like that, when we head into the stroke properties, there's pressure at the bottom here. Now, what you can do is using these handles is you can create some weird sort of shapes. So this being the start of the stroke, and this side being the end of the stroke. If you click on one side and drag, we can make that side thinner. Similarly, we can make the end of it thinner as well, like so. Now, if you click on it and you can see, you might not be able to see it, but there's like a white dot in the middle of that square there. If you have that white dot selected, it'll select both sides. So you'll be changing the stroke completely throughout the whole of that curve. What you can do as well is pop a new node in the middle and perhaps make the middle of that stroke thinner than the outside. And what's really good with these is you can reset this and you can do something as simple as making one side a lot thinner, popping an arrow on the other side and making a nice little arrow which may come of use to you as well. So again, super useful. On to the third thing about Affinity Designer that you may not know is the assets. Now these work really well and are probably one of my favorite things about this software. So as you can see in the top left side here, I've got the assets panel. Similarly with the stock panel, you go to view, studio and assets to open that up. Now within this is you can save different shapes and curves, just save them for later for future projects. So like you can see is I've got a group here for Instagram, which has all the symbols that I may need. I've similarly got a Twitch one. And I've got one for my own logos, a YouTube, a Twitter, etc. Now what you can do is you can add something into this. So for example, if we wanted to, for some reason, have this arrow and keep this, is having it selected, heading over to the section that you'd want, clicking on these little three lines here and selecting add from selection. Now you'll have the shape that you've selected within your assets now. So if we delete this, and delete that. And let's say we add a new background in and make it red. And let's say we wanted to use this curve again. We would just simply drag that on and there it is. And we could also edit this again. So it's not as if it's a static picture. We can make some changes. If I needed, let's say the Twitch logo, I can pop that in there. If I needed the Instagram logo, I can pop that in there. That's pretty big actually. But I could use YouTube logo, pop it in. Twitter logo, keep that in there. So whatever I need, I can actually just keep it in, make that smaller so it's visible. So it allows you to save up any images that you know you're gonna use again. Just keep them in a safe place. You won't have to be looking for them anywhere else. All right, so on to number four, snapshots. Now, I'll be honest, I only found this because of doing research for this video, but it's definitely something I'm gonna be using in the future. Same place as before, head over to view, studio, and down to snapshots. Now this little window will open and what you can do is let's say you have your document and you're thinking of making some changes to it is you can save a snapshot title it something so let's say one now any changes that you make to this let's say we delete that YouTube logo we bring this further down move that like that if we wanted to revert back to our previous snapshot all we would do is click the snapshot that we wanted and hit this restore snapshot 
and it'll be exactly back to what it was on that snapshot. Alternatively, what you can do is save this snapshot and let's name that number two. And what you can also do is select one of these snapshots and create a new document from that snapshot. So if we click this button here, what we'll have is the first snapshot in a new document at the top here and the second snapshot where we're making the changes. This means that you can actually make an edit of something, snapshot it, make some changes, think I don't like how it is, revert back to what it was before and actually save yourself a lot of time instead of having to remember what you've done or hitting control Z until you've got back to where you were. Like I said, this is definitely something I'm going to start using more since I found this. Next. The fifth thing you may not know about Affinity Designer is the boundary box. What we have here, we have two rectangles that you can see here, which seem to be lined up pretty well. Now, if you look really carefully, we zoom in on this, you can actually see that one of them is a little bit higher than the other one. If we click on this one and we want to line it up, the boundary box is actually in the way and can make it quite difficult to see what you're changing. If you simply hit H on the keyboard, the boundary box will disappear. And what you'll be able to do is hit H again to bring it back. Now you can make a little adjustment, hit H again, and now you can see it's a little bit lined up at the top, but in fact, down at the bottom here, it's not lined up again. So if we hit H, we can actually resize this so we know it's right. So just using that, you can actually just move it out the way to give yourself a clean image to be able to line things up or make any effects or anything like that just so if you've ever thought you know what that boundary box is in the way just hit h it'll disappear and you can make your changes coming up to number six is new view so if we head back into affinity designer if we head up to view and new view and click that open you'll open up a window which is exactly the same as what you're working on right now but what you can do is let's say zoom all the way out. And what I like to do is make this a separate window in itself and minimize it all the way down, make it as small as possible. Now what you have here is two views of the same document. So any changes you make in the top one will happen in the one that you have at the bottom. Now what I tend to do is have a zoomed out version as well as a full version, depending on what I'm making. So if I'm making something like a Twitch emote, which generally are really small. I'll zoom this out to around about the same sort of size an emote would be and be making all the changes and be able to just glance over and see is what I'm making actually being noticed? Is it just gonna fade away? And also, is it standing out from the background that it's on? Instead of having to zoom out, zoom in, you have a separate window itself. Any changes you make will be changed live within the second window that you can see down here. And finally, number seven is special pasting. So what we have here is a rectangle with a stroke and an inner glow and an outer glow. Now, if we wanted to copy the exact format that this has, which includes the stroke as well as the effects, what you can do is hit Control C on the object you want to copy head over to the one that you want to paste it on and hit control shift and V and it'll paste the stroke as well as the effects however if you just wanted to paste the effects we can use this one here which is alt shift and V and it'll paste just the effects however keep the format the same if you head up to edit you can see that actually you've got them here so paste style is what control shift and V is which is exactly everything that you're copying over. And you've got paste FX, which is Alt, Shift and V, which is just the effects if you needed to copy that over to another object. And that's it. Seven things about Affinity Designer that you may not have known about. Did you know any of these? If you did, drop them in the comments below. If you know any other tips that you wanna share, drop them in the comments as well. As always, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button as well because I definitely love making videos like this. You can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. Those links are in the description below. You can also follow me on Twitch. I stream Monday, Wednesdays, and starting to do Fridays as well. Link for that is in the description as well. So until next time, I have been Brown Bear, 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.